Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica White, editor at Supply Chain Brain, and I want to welcome you to today's webinar presentation all about accelerating supply chain transformation with cloud-based fleet planning, presented by Here Technologies and Amazon Web Services. One quick reminder, there will be a question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. So audience, please submit your questions at any time using that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We'll get to as many of those questions as we can, time permitting. Now, today's road transportation and fleet management companies compete in a market with fine margins. So IT and innovation budgets are limited, to say the least. Finding a starting point for your supply chain transformation journey can be challenging, but by leveraging cloud computing and cutting edge supply chain software, logistics companies can deliver cost and efficiency savings while also driving innovation. And we're gonna talk all about that today. I want to introduce our two speakers, Adnan Siddiqui. He is Senior Director of Product Management at Here Technologies. Adnan has more than 20 years of experience in building enterprise class products to solve customer problems at scale. He's currently leading the Logistics Applications Business Unit at Here Technologies. And he and the team are focused on building the transport and logistics intelligence that powers some of the industry's leading applications. Eric Topp is head of worldwide solutions for transportation and logistics at Amazon Web Services or AWS. Eric has more than 30 years of experience in the transportation and logistics space leading operations, IT transformation and sales and business development. Before AWS, he worked for the U.S. Army, IBM, and many more, traveling extensively for his previous roles, uh, working and living in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. Welcome, Adnan and Eric. And Adnan, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so I'll very quickly talk about here technologies. Uh, we're a uh, proven name in uh, providing location and mapping intelligence to uh, solutions all around the world requiring such intelligence. We have, we've been doing this for about 35 plus years. Um, we have uh, 1300 plus uh, enterprise customers. Um, I really love this uh, statistic there. Uh, there is about 550,000 direct developers that touch our code. Um, uh, we, we support about 153 billion API calls per month. So it's uh, overall a fantastic achievement. Um, and uh, you combine these capabilities with AWS, there is just exponential growth. So I'll, with that, I'll just hand it off to Eric. Hey, thank you, Adnan. And you know, it's great to be here. Thank uh, everybody for attending. You know, I think most everyone knows who AWS is and a little bit of what we do. If not, I'm going to hit on that later. But what I really wanted to focus on in this part of the session was talking about why AWS in here. And what I jokingly say is it's kind of like peanut butter and chocolate. Um, here's one of the largest and most sophisticated providers of mapping and routing information around the globe. And what I really like is their products are designed to fit for all sizes of organizations and give immediate value. Uh, they've got a lot of different use cases and applications, whether it be track it, track it, uh, tracking, monitoring, routing. And we partnered with here because we wanted to work with the best of be breed provider while supporting in the market both our builders and our buyers. I, I joke that historically, um, a lot of our clients used to come to us and say, you know, I want a screen, I want a battery, I want a case. And now more and more clients are coming to us and just saying, you know, I just want a phone that works and make it easy for me and give me that easy button. So that's really why we looked at partnering with AWS in here to bring us solutions to the market that are best of breed. Thanks guys. So I wanna to start today off before we get into the panel discussion on a poll question for the audience. And audience, you can select as many of these answers that apply to you. Um, so the question, what are the main challenges of the supply chain industry today? I'll go through the choices here. One is prompt surface and delivery issues. 
two, stakeholder collaboration, three, costs, four, predictive analytics, five, operational or staffing complexities, six, end-to-end -end visibility, and seven, workflow automation. So go ahead and get those answers in. And I'm curious what, uh, what Eric and Adnan have to say about these. Okay, so we have our answers in. It looks like a pretty good mix here, uh, which isn't surprising, of course. Our number one answer is end-to-end -end visibility at 61%. It looks like after that is costs, go figure, at 54%. Uh, and then we're pretty even across the board in the 20s and 30s with the rest of the answers here. Eric and Adnan, if you want to come back and we'll discuss some of these. Are you uh, surprised at the answers? Were you anticipating uh, more of a big diversity in terms of percentages? Uh, you know, I, I think for me, it came across, you know, pretty standard. I, I was a bit surprised to see that uh, given recent events that cost wasn't the number one and that it was still visibility. So that was my, my key takeaway from it. Adnan? Yeah, similar. I, I feel that I was expecting a lot of focus on cost, but uh, I see a very uh, well-educated uh, sort of like distribution of the uh, weight weight there. Um, so the cost could be driven by all of these factors, right, uh, as, as a consequent uh, result, right? So overall, um, very promising. I think it's a good segue into the discussion. Sure. I wouldn't be surprised if everyone clicked on that cost button and that, you know, added some of their other answers as well. Um, so I know, Eric, you already touched a little bit on the partnership between AWS and here, but Adnan, I wanted to ask if you could share some background regarding this partnership. Yeah, absolutely. So we've been providing location and mapping intelligence to our customers for, you know, quite a while now, over three and a half decades. If you look at recent past, most of the offerings and accelerated innovation um, and enhancement paths, um, you know, that it's been made possible by the collaboration that we have with AWS. Um, it's the underlying cutting edge technologies that AWS has to offer that we extensively utilize uh, to provide uh, an amazing experience for our customers. Um, so continuing the same collaboration path, um, we've partnered up with uh, AWS team to build the best in class transport and logistics intelligence um, to help empower your customers and partners to build the end-to-end uh, -end supply chain solutions. That's the, that's the key here. Uh, so for, from our customer's perspective, uh, our customers benefit from uh, industry leading TNL intelligence uh, while all the underlying benefits that AWS infrastructure has to offer around economies of scale, performance, um, innovation, and, and obviously overall customer experience. Okay, great. So let's get into it here. Um, we already looked at some of the key answers, but I'm curious if you have anything to add on what are the main challenges of supply chain companies today and why is digital transformation so, so important. Um, Eric, let's start with you. Yeah, digital transformation is incredibly important. And, you know, there, interesting, there was actually a study that was done, you know, by a consulting firm recently that really said that says that digital transformation and sustainability are tied. And the companies that are going to be going down those paths, you know, to try to drive the value around those areas are going to be 2.5 times more likely to outperform their peers you know, which is, you know, incredibly important, but the challenge is, is what I call the, the forest and the trees. And I run into this a lot. I'll, I'll be talking to clients and, you know, everyone can see like that vision, you know, like the beacon on the hill kind of hazily of what they want to become when they finish their digital transformation or when they do something around sustainability, but they really don't have a, a, a you know, a clear map or as to how to get there. They don't know how to build that map. And I'll give you a couple of examples. So like I have a client I'm working with right now that has 
60 different initiatives that they prioritized as part of their digital transformation. And now they want us to come back and be basically prioritize those 60 as to which ones they should do first. And, you know, that, that's the biggest challenge that I see because companies want to be able to show progress and measurable success, you know, along these journeys. And you'll see a lot of this out here in the, in the marketplace when folks are, are starting to look at transformation. And I'm sure we'll talk about this later on, but, you know, you know in transportation logistics, I still have a lot of clients that are running on AS400 and RPG code, for example. And I, literally, I was just talking to one the other day, and you know, they're like, "Yeah, we're ready to transform," but they're, you know, they're, they're, it's almost like they're in this hold mode. And kind of like what I alluded to before, one of the things that I find that it's you know so important to do is you know it's driving that innovation, driving that change. And what's great about the, the partnership with here is that you know all the solutions that here has today kind of fits into that larger transformation strategy of transportation and logistics so they can get a win on the road to that journey. But you know, th there's a lot that goes into this. And I know we're gonna talk about a lot of different things. So, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Adnan, I'm not sure what else, you know, you'd like to add on this. Yeah, I completely agree with what you said. Uh, I think the common theme that we observe is um, as our customers attempt to solve uh, some of the uh, readily visible problems, it's extremely important to create that end-to-end -end picture and tie it to your business goals. Um, so, so, you know, so, so that you don't end up creating the silos individually solving problems at small scale and not impacting the uh, overall uh, business uh, outcome. Um, the adoption of supply chain optimization is uh, also a, a key challenge where um, you know, the team members sometimes see the proposed automation or transformation uh, as a threat. Uh, so one has to acknowledge the human factor and, you know, consider uh, and include the team uh, as part of the decision making process and, you know, as part of putting together the overall strategy. I 100% agree with you on, on, on sustainability that it's a, it's a key um, focus area uh, and, and we're seeing more and more attention being given uh, to carbon footprint measurements and, and the path towards uh, net zero carbon footprint. Um, and, and obviously to be able to effectively uh, analyze and establish the problem statement, you need to first of all collect data, process that data, um, establish insights and then come up with a plan. So those are some of the problems that you know we, we see. Okay, so how can companies deal with all of this? I mean, how can a logistics company create a solid vision um, and really a roadmap to implementing digital transformation? Uh, Eric, what, what is some of the advice that you give to your clients? Yeah, you know, kind of like what I alluded to before, you know, it's, it's always a challenge and, you know, and I'm, I think in many cases, the complexity, of course, is multiplied in the larger in a larger organization than it is in a you know, small, medium business, uh, you know, for what you're trying to do. But they, you know, they all suffer from the same challenges. Um, you know, I have a couple clients that, that I'm working with right now. One of them is a top five 3PL, and they spent the last nine months coming up with their overall vision. So basically what they did is they sat down and they analyzed for what the 3PL of the future will look like. And then they backwards planned and came up with all the initiatives that would enable them to actually get there. And now we're in the process of getting those all lined up and getting them you know, tied to, to business value so that you, know, you can basically drive that innov innovation. And of course, you know, doing this takes time and it, it really is an iterative loop. Um, you know, I, I came from a background of business process redesign, and I always joke with people, you can take a really great, you know, a really terrible business process and put a really expensive technology on top of it and turn it into a really expensive, terrible business process. So, you know, when you're doing all this, you have to balance a, a lot of different things that are out there to be able to build that journey when you're getting there, whether it's, you know, uh, cost to value, you know, how long it's going to take you to launch something, 
one that um, Adnan measured people. People are incredibly important. The other one that, that folks tend to forget are politics and political challenges within organizations, because as much as we like you know, to talk about how we're now integrating the supply chain from all these operational points, one of the challenges we still have is that our organizations are still in silos. And so it's always, you know, always interesting to try to get different organizations to align to that same vision. And then the, the last thing that I always tell people about is and digital transformation is balancing those business process requirements with IT. I've seen it a lot in transformations where there are large IT groups within an organization. And I used to work with a lot of engineers and we used to have a running joke, the, the chickens are on the loose. You know, IT's job is to basically solve IT's problems. And in many cases, when you go through these digital transformations, you also have to do that cost trade-off between a build versus a buy. You may have an IT shop that is incredibly sharp and feels that they, you know, they can build this, but is that really their core competency? And that's one of the arguments that we, uh, you know, or not arguments, but discussions we have back and forth with clients all the time. So Adnan, I'm curious to what, you know, your feedback and input is on this. Yeah, 100% agree. I, I think you share some really key insights there. Um, I think vendor selection is also very important. Um, and, and, and I think um, it's important to choose a vendor with a diverse set of competencies uh, so that you, you're, not having, you're not having to consume your bandwidth with the administrative overhead uh, pertaining to managing multiple vendors, uh, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think if we, if we talk about here technologies and, you know, our capabilities um, and a proven track record of building, mapping, location, and automotive solutions. Um, it shows our outside the box approach um, that we have um, while building supply chain optimization solutions. Um, so whether we're helping our customers manage fleet or track high value assets across land, water, air, or you know helping them operate in a more environmentally responsible manner. Um, uh, we look to integrate with our customers uh, along the way to um, ensure the targeted optimization outcomes, right? To the targeted business outcomes that you talked about. So, so yeah, I completely agree. So Adnan, can you share some best practices to setting up digital transformation programs for supply chain companies? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll start with, um, obviously you have to work backwards from the uh, business outcomes you're after. Everything you do needs to drive a business outcome, whether you're uh, after operational efficiency, whether you're uh, improving visibility, it needs to tie into uh, a business outcome. Um, that's how you get, get attention at all levels. That's how you get alignment at all levels. Um, it's also uh, very important to show uh, the team members uh, the underlying benefits of the vision uh, of the proposal. Um, and once again, um, Eric talked about the human factor. I talk about the human factor. It's extremely important uh, that you include the folks that are getting impacted as a result of this transformation and, and work with them, uh, make sure they're heard, make sure they're included in the in, in putting together that vision, um, in the design optimization, in the adoption, as you're you know creating those trainings. Um, and, and it's extremely important to architect the end-to-end -end solution. Um, so when you do that, you you will end up determining the handoffs and integration you know, points and capabilities of the technology stack that you're choosing. Um, and most probably when you, when you look at the overall picture, you, you will also uh, end up producing a single source of truth uh, that will consolidate some of your existing data sources uh, and sort of like make it more consumable. Uh, so those are some of the key points. So as, as our customers think about change, taking this challenge on, um, you, we, we, we sh our customers should think about you know, some consistent metrics and KPIs that you can, you know, utilize to, to, to measure the positive impact on the overall operation of your business. And, uh, 
Uh, and also it's uh, extremely important to benchmark uh, what you're doing versus uh, some of the industry standards. So maybe um, get a third person's perspective or a third party's perspective on um, your overall solution, your overall approach, your overall KPIs and the, uh, and the business outcome that you're after. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's always uh, great to get that third fresh pair of eyes. That can always be a, a good perspective to add. So, sorry, Eric, I cut you off. Are there any best practices that, that you would add? Yeah, I, I just be very pithy and say, you know, plan your work and work your plan with, uh, with variation and adaptation. You know, so for example, I, I, you know, I have a value map that I do, supposed to do it every year of all the solutions I'm going to launch for AWS. And like I said, it's supposed to be done every year. I find that I tend to update it every couple of weeks because, you know, it's always new information coming in, you know, change, adapt. And, you know, there's a great story from the, you know, the Battle of the Bulge, uh, and many of you may know it, but basically, you know, the Germans got a hold of some of our plans as part of Battle of the Bulge. And the German, you know, lieutenant comes into the commander and says, I've got a hold of the Americans' plans now we'll know exactly what they're going to do. And his comment back was, those plans are worthless because the Americans never follow their plans. And then what he was getting at is we tend to adapt and, and change based on the inputs and everything that's happening. And so the same is true with any plan that you're going to put in place. I consider it a, a living document. So, okay. So talking about that, longer term vision um, and really having a plan going forward, how can supply chain companies ensure that they remain focused on that and achieving their long term vision uh, and goals? Adnan? Yeah, I mean, uh, everything has to tie to a business outcome. You, you got to have, and then you got to be able to break it down into medium term, near term, mid term, long term outcomes contributing to the umbrella business outcomes that you came up with for you for your organization. Um, I, I talked about this earlier. You, you got to score some quick wins. You got to recognize all your key stakeholders across the organization, uh, third parties that you work with, you know, potential partners. Um, include your staff in creating that vision. Don't just come up with it by yourself. Uh, include your staff in the planning and training that you develop. Uh, you, you make sure that you have a, a project-driven mindset where everything, uh, you know, you have this grand vision, but then you break it into uh, measurable and executable chunks. And, um, and then those chunks should not, like the duration that you're working on, chunk number one, should not exceed one to one and a half quarter max. I mean, just... You got to be able to divide your overall scope of work into these smaller measurable chunks and, and, and define the success metrics uh, for holding all the disciplines in, accountable, including yourself, including the key, um, you know, thought leaders behind the idea. Uh, and, and as stated earlier, benchmarking is, is the key. Please uh, do pay attention to that. Um, and, and, and I think uh, with this platform and with the joint offerings with, uh, with AWS and, and here technologies, uh, the combined value that we offer uh, via the supply chain focus offerings um, helps, it helps our customers enormously uh, in uh, quantifying our customer's vision into measurable and executable, executable chunks and uh, while supporting them, guiding them um, every step of the way. Um, and um, while collaborating with um, our customers, engineering, solutioning, integration, you know, and, and, and other fronts. Yeah, I, I would only add to that, that, you know, it kind of hit on it a little bit before that it really comes back to having a plan that balances, you know, your, your time, your cost versus, you know, the benefit of the initiative, you know, somewhat your, you know, your organizational politics, as I alluded to before, um, you know, I keep coming back just as Adnan does as well to people, uh, because people can make or break uh, your transformation. I, I've seen it many times. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about digital transformation or whether we're talking about transformation in general. So, you know, historically, uh, you know, I've done large scale, you know, year on year transformation projects before I joined AWS with 
companies like you know FedEx, UPS, the U.S. military, um, militaries around the go the globe, and I think the Singaporeans put it best. They used to have this little sign that had two fingers or two hands with rubber bands, and it talked about creative tension. Um, and you know, there's a lot of that that goes on in an organization when you're you know, when you're looking at transformation. Uh, you know, I'd also probably highlight that when you're looking at what to do in your transformation, you know, kind of like what I highlighted to before. You know, there are there are you know there are long poles in the tent and there are short poles. And you know, like if I were to come to you today and we started talking about, okay, well, we're going to do a complete data lake architecture for you. I mean, that's a huge lift with many organizations because of all the different disparate systems and applications that they have running around their organization. So sometimes it makes more sense while, you know, while you may be still working on that to be doing smaller initiatives that are around that, that allow you to actually achieve your vision. And that's really what, what I try to look at when I'm talking to clients. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, when you're looking at all of these benefits that you guys are talking about of really doing this transformation, which operational and business benefits can a cloud service provider, uh, offer to a supply chain organization? Sure. I think I'll take this one considering, you know, where I'm from. I think, it, you know, a little bit of it depends too, as to where you sit, whether you're, your IT or your the business side of the house. And, you know, a lot of times when you're talking to folks, you know, you kind of have to adjust your language, you know, based on who you're talking to. I think it was uh, um, UPS had a wonderful commercial years ago, you know, on a, um, where, you know, basically the two consultants, you know, come in and they're talking to the executive and they like, okay, we, you need to use J2EE, blah, 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 blah. And they run off all these technical terms and the executive looks at them and goes, well, explain it to me like I'm in college. And it goes through a couple iterations and they skip right to the end and the executive has his head down. He says, explain it to me like I'm in high school or kindergarten, I'm sorry. And uh, the answer is, well, for every $1 you spend, you're going to get $3 back. So when you're talking about looking at cloud and cloud computing, if you're on the IT side, you know, you're very focused. What's great about cloud is, you know, you're trading fixed expense for variable expenses. You get mass economies of scale. You don't have to worry about guessing capacity. You get increased speed and agility. You can reduce spend. You can go global in minutes. Whereas if you're on the business side, you know, the, the answer to that is it's easy to use. It's flexible. It's cost effective. It's reliable and it's secure. Um, you know, one of the great things about and great and terrible things about the transportation logistics industry is we tend to be laggers. Um, I, I still, like I said, I still have clients that I'm talking to today that are on mainframe and are just now starting to talk about going to the cloud. And they're talking about it like they're going to get all their savings just by moving to the cloud. And the reality is when you look at things, you have migration, modernization, and innovation. And roughly about 10 to 15 percent of your value is going to come from migration. And so what I'm getting at is by when you're moving to the cloud, you're going to want to start looking at doing this digital transformation, which is the modernization and the innovation, because that's where you really get the value of the cloud. So those are my two cents. Uh, Adnan? I think you covered it all. I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I love what you said. Explain like I'm in kindergarten. I think yeah. that translating those benefits is, is such an important step. And, um, you know, just really understanding, as you said earlier, the meat and potatoes. Um, so we talked about a lot of internal benefits so far, but when it comes to a competitive edge, how can location intelligence and advanced fleet planning help companies build that? Uh, Adnan, you want to start? Uh, sure. So location intelligence is uh, extremely important attribute uh, in the supply chain equation. If you know the exact location of your assets, you can unlock so much potential whether it comes to you know tracking, planning, prediction. Uh, we have so many customer examples where the additional magnification on historical and ongoing location intelligence from here technologies, um, we helped uncover uh, so much 
untouched potential for uh, supply chain optimization. Sometimes, um, well, no data is irrelevant. You just gotta find the, the right use for it. So the, the, the real time dynamic updates, um, you know, that we provide um, with respect to location, uh, it, it helps transport and logistic companies uh, proactively uh, act to disruptions um, and inform stakeholders. Sometimes um, that's pretty much all you can do, uh, or sometimes it helps improve the uh, supply chain agility and, and robustness. Um, you, you top all of those capabilities, uh, all the intelligence uh, and data gathering and visibility uh, with artificial intelligence uh, that 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 gets that gets that becomes possible with the collaboration of here and AWS. Um, now you can learn patterns uh, based off of your uh, past decisions that you made uh, or experiences um, to 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 adapt to changing real world circumstances. We we talk about business continuity in a whole different way now. We, we talk about pandemics. We talk about um, political imbalance or, or political, you know, disruptions, right? So our offerings and, you know, deploy solutions need to continuously retrain and learn uh, within the runtime and within the development uh, environment and make those, 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 those decisions. Um, so these solutions collectively, uh, they, they produce an outcome for the customer without requiring the uh, incremental human capital that, that makes it possible. So uh, the the end result here is a, an overall uh, superior, much superior operational efficiency. Um, you know, if you're a fleet operator, you you know you you reduce your tour planning execution times. You you have less manual interactions. You you, you make uh, more stops per vehicle on average in terms of you know picking up and dropping up packages. Uh, and and we help you pick the. Um, more environmentally friendly routes, right? So those are some of the uh, outcomes. And you know, even if we talk about post-trip analysis and reporting, um, we can provide insights into the delivery performance and you know, allow for operational adjustments and optimizations to, um, to help the business grow um, and save money and you know, operate more efficiently. Great, Eric, was there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, just a couple things, uh, you know, um, kind of pivoting a bit, you know, one of the things that I, I really think is incredibly important, you know, when it comes to, you know, using location intelligence and fleet planning to help companies build a competitive edge is tying back to Ricardo's law of comparative advantage. Uh, when I was an MBA a lifetime ago, uh, you know, it, we had a variation on this. And what I was, the variation on it uh, wasn't talking about like economies between nations, but more about doing best what you, you know, focusing on what you do best. And so, for example, you know, what here is bringing to the table to be able to do, you know, last mile, middle mile, asset optimization, it, it really is their core bread and butter. It's what they do best. And so, you know, like a lot of organizations, even internally within AWS, we develop a lot of things, you know, that work for us, but it's more about for people in the market picking what works best for them. And so if you look at like last mile where 50% of the fulfillment costs occur and like 70% of the customers choose the, the cheapest delivery op option, there's, you know, there's very little loyalty um, 55% of, of your customers will switch, you know, with a faster or more reliable service. So all of this is really tying into your, your operations to really drive, you know, a competitive difference. And having a solution, you know, like the one from here allows you to, you know, really, you know, up your game. You know, I think initially maybe like pre-COVID, it was a nice to have to be able to do like, middle mile or last mile routing and optimization plays. Now I think it's table stakes. If you don't have it, you know, to optimize what you're doing, uh, your customers are going to be going elsewhere. And they're, you know, they're, they're also, it's a great way to, you know, reduce your costs. And, you know, we have the same challenge, you know, internally because it's incredibly complex. And so not every company deals with the same level of complexity that we do, but, 
um, it, it's still very, much more challenging than trying to do things manually. We still have a lot of clients that will do their middle mile routing by hand and still think that it's better than what uh, optimization tool can come up with. And just to give you like a scale of comp complexity for our operations, um, you know, our, our number of possible routing and complexity options are 10 to the 88 uh, in middle mile. And the uh, known number of atoms in the universe are 10 to the 82nd. So that gives you the level of complexity that's, that can potentially be out there in a network. So to me, like I said, it's a must have. That's actually a bit scary to me, <laughs> that number. How does it know so many? That's incredible. Um, I'm curious about real world examples of this stuff. Can you guys share examples of transportation and logistics digital transformation projects that your companies have been involved in and some of the KPI improvements uh, actually realized? Adnan, you wanna start? Sure. Um, some of the names that uh, come to mind are Coach International, Rastret, Olsen Group, uh, Timocom, I think some, some of them, most of them are common across you know, the AWS as well, right? So um, the common theme of uh, problem statement uh, that we saw was uh, we needed to help solve the, the multi-vehicle routing. Um, so where, how do you distribute a large number of stops and deliveries across a, a you know, fleet of vehicles in an optimal way? And uh, um, so if you, if I'll, I'll pick up Coach International, right? So uh, they, they had a fleet of about 100 plus trucks um, specializing in um, large customer goods delivery. So they had about um, 2,000 deliveries per day uh, on average. Um, they, were, they had manual processes, uh, extremely complex fleet problem, fleet planning problem equation. Um, they had pressure to improve cost and operational efficiency. Uh, Eric, Eric touched upon uh, lack of loyalty and you know, continuation. Um, wherever sometimes customers see the most value where the, you know, in, in terms of the economy of scale in the, in the economies or the bottom line. Um, and then uh, minimizing tour distance, uh, improving carbon emissions uh, and, you know, improving the overall uh, vehicle efficiency. So those are the problems that we worked uh, with Coach International on. Um, and um, we, uh, once we, once we were finished with the project and, you know, about two quarters into operation, uh, we, uh, we saw about 80% 80 80 faster execution of the, the, the tour planning process. Uh, the, the fleet utilization increased significantly from 14 stops to about 16 stops uh, per tour on average. 14% um, increase in productivity. Uh, that translates to 14% uh, overall productivity per vehicle. 6% um, improvement on on-time delivery performance. And, uh, and obviously, when you achieve all of those statistics, uh, it's an improved overall customer satisfaction. Um, uh, another customer that I want to talk about is uh, Restrate, um, and their problem statement was, um, I think, an expansion case, and I think Eric touched on this as well, that a lot of customers prefer to do the planning manually because they have this knowledge and they believe that uh, a software or an application could not be a substitute of that. Uh, in, in some cases, it may be true, but uh, think of yourself as a as a fleet operator and how difficult would it be to replace uh, a resource like that? If I am an expert of this area around like, you know, five mile radius, I know every street, I know where you should go first, where you should go second and, and last and whatever. How difficult would it be for you to uh, train my replacement um, or, or expand my skill set into uh, multiple resources? So that's the challenge um, that our customers face. That's the challenge. Um, that, um, you know, the restaurant was facing and that's what we helped solve. Uh, we generalized uh, the, uh, the skill set of, you know, commercial driving for them uh, where any driver uh, could potentially follow, could be trained uh, and, and they can follow the guidelines and, you know, uh, prompts that were uh, given to them. 
um, to 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 perform equally to an extremely experienced driver. So that's what we did. So those are a couple of customers for me. Yeah, if, if I could jump in for just a second, I mean, you know, I, I try to keep things very generally with customers, and one of the things, you know, uh, you know, Adnan brought it up, you know, the, especially the the middle mile routing, you know, I, I jump on that and say it's a lot of it, you know, I would generally call it more like false knowledge it, it's somebody thinking that they can do you know do a routing better than an algorithm can no a, an algorithm can, you know can do it better uh, it, 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 you know basically you look at what's going on out there um, and, and that's some of the back to that change management that you deal with you know with an actual you know organization one of the case studies that um, that here did with AWS that uh, is really simple um, that I really enjoyed was was wholesome and um, cement is a very challenging business. If you're doing like a pour of cement to do construction, you know, cement has like a 90 minute shelf life. And so if it's like 90, you know, if it's two, you know, if it's 91 minutes or 93 minutes, it's a huge problem. And it, it, for those of you who are, are uh, movie buffs like me, you can go, there's a great movie called uh, Lock with Tom Hardy. And part of the whole movie is about this, but um, great solution that here put in place to try to, or not to try to actually optimize the routing of cement trucks for wholesome because, you know, it was one of these things where did they have incremental savings? Sure. They, they, you know, they saved on fuel and operational efficiency between, you know, like 15 to 20%, just like everyone else does. But it's more the cost of a potential failure, because in this case, the cost of a potential failure could be $100,000 to a $1 million, depending on, on what you're doing. And those are a lot of the ones that, you know, are incredibly, you know, the, the ROI is very simple uh, out there. Now, if you're running just a, a generic product network, you're going to find operational savings in things like you know, anywhere from five to 15% in your operational costs, your fleet operating costs, you know, anywhere from 12 to 20, uh, 15 to 25% increase in ETAs, uh, 15 to 30% increase in vehicle utilization. So it really depends on the organization as to what metrics they tend to zero in on. But uh, those are the stuff that I tend to highlight with clients. Okay, great, great answers. Um... So I want to save us a little bit of time for audience questions. Um, but before we do that, I have a second poll question here. Um, so audience, get ready to submit your answers. And this one is not multiple answer, just one. So the question is, most companies have a digital transformation strategy today. Do you think your company has an adequate plan in place to reach that vision? So you can say yes, or if the answer is no, we have a couple of reasons here. Uh, no, because of lack of budget. No, because of workforce skill set mismatch. Uh, reluctance to change as an organization. Competitive pressures, um, meaning short-term priorities prevail. Risk aversion unclear business case, lack of trusted partners, or other reasons, something uh, not covered here. So go ahead and submit your answers. And we'll pull up the results here and discuss those. Okay, wow, this is very interesting. It looks like, um, Nearly half of you guys do have a strategy uh, and you have a plan in place to reach that vision, which is great to see. And those who don't, it looks like the biggest reason is a workforce skill set mismatch. Uh, makes sense, but not lack of budget, which I'm surprised to see. Adnan, Eric, what, what do you think of these results here? I think overall, it's fantastic to see the growing attention uh, on, on part of our customers and, you know, target audience uh, on optimizing the supply chain and, and the transformation. So that's fantastic to see, um, especially uh, I think it's in line with 
us coming out of a pandemic and you know the world running into the global supply chain you know complex equation complex problem to solve um so yeah it, it's expected uh, it's uh, uh it's in line with what i what i thought um and 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 i think I, i'll touch upon the same point that it's important to partner with the right lenders so um so we, we would love to have a conversation and you know um talk about what you're working on and how we can help yeah, I think the, the only thing I might add to that is, uh, you know, it, it's been quoted to a couple different people, but it usually gets attributed to Mike Tyson, which is everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. And, you know, so, the, I, you know, one of the follow up questions I would probably ask is, well, how resilient or how flexible or adaptable do you think your plan is? And that's what's really going to drive your success in the future. Yeah, that's a great point to keep in mind. So let's get into some of these audience questions here. Um, okay, let's start with this one. Where do you see the transport and logistics industry in five to 10 years? And what will likely be the differentiators that define success for these companies? Uh, let's start with Eric on this one. Uh Boy, you know, I used, to, I used to joke when I worked for uh, Bolloray, I was in uh, aid and relief a lot. And they used to ask me, what, what, what's, ne- what's the future going to look like? And, w- you know, we always used to say, well, if we could predict that, you know, I probably would be in the stock market because, you know, a good year for that type of business you know, was when something bad happened. And so it was always you know, difficult to forecast bad events. But in this case, where I see things really going is, you know, being able to capture and retain your workforce and growing their skills, that's going to be incredibly important. Uh, You're gonna need to be, if you're not on the cloud now, you need to get on the cloud. Uh, And like I said, it's not just the initial savings, it's the innovation and the the modernization that is going to really drive things. You know, there's no reason to wait. It's proven we even have militaries that are now moving to the cloud from a security standpoint. Um, The other thing that I I like to highlight on and given recent events is sustainability. Um, You know, two things about sustainability. I I think there's different levels of sustainability and you're going to see it move in. You definitely have to be part of it, but you also have to be pragmatic when you're moving into sustainability as to looking at what the business value is. And you know, also in many cases, that you know, putting on a different hat, um, we are all consumers, so we're drivers of sustainability. And what I mean by that is, you know, if there's an option from a vendor um, or driving your, um, you know, the, the the company that you're working with to think about this so that it drives value. And then of course the other thing it's really going to be, and we talked a lot about it um, earlier this week at MHI was about you know uh, generative ai and what, what i tell people is move and move with measured application uh sort you know you're gonna have to sort marketing from reality there's a lot of changes that are coming and it doesn't mean you have to jump in you know with hip waders right away you can jump jump in with the you know puddle puddle boots and just come in and start playing and seeing what actually works and tying it to your business application of what's going on. So, you know, th- those are the, you know, those are the key drivers that I really see changing things in the next five to 10 years. Adnan? I completely agree. Um, I, I see a lot of consolidation happening yeah. and um, it's extremely important to choose the cloud, the, the right cloud partner, because you, you want to leverage the, the ecosystem of, you know, cutting edge services and, you know, all around capabilities, the economies of scale. Um, and, and, and once again, I'll, I'll repeat myself, ecosystem. You, ecosystem of services is very important. You, you, you run out of bandwidth very fast when you work with multiple teams, multiple vendors, multiple integrations that you're having to do. So the cloud has enormous advantage um, to, to provide to our customers um, and, and consolidation. I see a lot of consolidation happening um, there's a lot of clutter in supply chain optimization space. Uh, I see more and more consolidation uh, towards uh, unified solutions uh, that address multiple problems 
around uh, at the same time. Uh, and that's, that's what I see. Okay, so we touched a little bit on this next question, but I'm curious if you guys have anything to add. How do organizations prepare for the digital transformation that's coming, or I should say is already very much arrived um, to remain relevant in the future? Uh, Adnan, let's start with you. Yeah, I'll be very brief. Uh, vision, uh, foresight, uh, you gotta have the budget. Uh, and your plan needs to be resilient. Uh, you got to stay put and uh, score quick wins and continue to march towards the end goal. That's basically it. No, and, and I agree. I, you know, I'll try to be as distinct. You know, basically what I tell people is, you know, five things. You need to focus on your data and turning it into actionable information. Everyone's got tons of data, but not a lot of actionable information. Uh, tie your op your transformation goals to your operational needs. Uh, you've heard it multiple times. You know, build the skills in your workforce. Uh, plan your work and work your plan. Uh, what I mean by that is stay focused on the basics with an eye towards innovation as you're going through your transformation. And my my last uh, running joke is, you know, kind of like Adnan hit on here is uh, pick your partners like you pick your spouse. You know, you have to be very careful. You know who you're, you know who you're working with, and making sure they're a right fit for your organization. And you know it's okay to fail, uh, but if you fail, fail fast and get out of it right away, and and, and make sure you adjust and readapt, you know, as soon as possible. Yeah, I love the phrase. Uh, Don't do it perfectly, just do it. <laughs> yeah. One I try to live by as a, a perfectionist, sometimes hard. But um, okay, so this question is interesting. It's about AI. What is your vision on the contribution of AI regarding the ability to better optimize the last mile? And where are we on the predictive aspect of traffic to rationalize our costs? Guys, does anyone want to start off? Enormous. I think AI has enormous impact already and and I think it's going to exponentially increase um, as humans we 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 factor in multiple inputs uh, we um, you know we talk about hey let's go do delivery number three first because you're going to run into traffic on delivery number one right so you're you're automatically accounting for you know these multiple inputs uh, now imagine you know uh, an art artificially intelligent application that can take all those data points from your historical uh, experiences and decisions that you made and optimize the last mile delivery. Um, so there's enormous potential. It's already happening. We, we have uh, some of those capabilities uh, in, in the solutions that we, we offer and build today with our partners. Um, going forward, uh, yeah, so as we collect more and more data around, you know, historical practices, historical experiences, uh, and uh, traffic patterns, historical traffic patterns to predict what's going to happen. Um, there is so much untapped potential, uh, and and I think overall, uh, it's gonna AI is gonna play a huge role uh, in supply chain going forward. No, I, I agree, and I think you're gonna even see it uh, on a greater level when we start what I call, instead of zooming in, pulling back. So, you know, the applications for AI within like a routing and optimization package, like what we're talking about here for moving trucks or assets, incredibly powerful. And, you know, and kind of like, once again, the table stakes to getting in these days. But I also think when you pull back and you start looking at leveraging, you know, more and more data, so that you're not just looking at, the routing of your vehicles, you're also going to be looking at your network design and the much larger, you know, operation of your overall supply chain and linking all of that together. And that's where it's going to get, um, you know, incredibly interesting to see the, you know, the uh, dimensional value. Okay, great. So it looks like we're running a bit low on time here, but I do want to get to one more audience question. Um, we've talked a lot about the impact of digital transformation of the supply chain. So I think this one uh, is a good closing question. What should be the main drivers 
tips for someone who is considering implementing this technology, location technology, and what should be the next steps? Uh, Adnan? Yeah, I think the audience, um, you know, our, our, our team members here uh, helped answer that question, uh, operational efficiency gains uh, and um, multi-level, all level visibility. Um, so whether you're handing the job to contractors or doing it with in-house resources, you want to you wanna have visibility and then capability to understand the previous patterns, process that data into actionable insights and tying it to a business outcome. That's, those are the key um, focus for me. Yeah, and I, I would just go back once again to, you know, kind of like the army. I'm going to tell you what I told you. I'm going to, you know, tell you what I just told you. And I'm going to tell you again, you know, meat and potatoes, focus, uh, big focus right now on reducing costs and improving operational fit efficiency. You want to have a quick hit, you know, tied to solution value. What's great about HERE's offerings partnered with AWS is they appeal to both builders and buyers. And what I mean by that is some people want to do just an API call, some, you know, to be able to then build their own bespoke solution for routing and optimization. Some just want the complete package like they want the iPhone. So from a call to action standpoint, I would recommend you take a look at the case studies uh, that you're going to get some links here to and book a meeting with here in AWS to talk to us about how we can help you transform and see some value. Awesome, yeah, uh, unfortunately we are out of time so we won't be able to take any more questions but um, that's great that Eric and Adnan will be able to answer those offline if you reach out to them. So I wanna thank you guys, Eric, Adnan for the fantastic presentation, great answers. And audience, I want to thank you for tuning in and staying with us. You're looking now at some very valuable resources. Um, there's a QR code you can scan to get an ebook on this topic and dive in. You'll also be receiving an email with a link to this ebook and a link to this whole presentation on demand uh, to watch later. So look out for that and have a great rest of your day.